Chelsea's poor week continued, although they did dig out a draw at the end at Bournemouth, having taken the lead initially in the first half through Marcus Alonso. A quick turnaround in the fortunes of Bournemouth, two goals in four minutes in the second half, and then five minutes from the end, another one for Marcus Alonso, who made it three goals in the week, saw Chelsea at least take a point. But Bournemouth, that's a point that helps them in the relegation battle. It doesn't help Chelsea in terms of their form, Craig. This is uh, two wins in the last six in all competitions, one win in the last six uh, in the league, and only six points taken in that time. Yeah, I think uh, and if you think back before that whole City game, there was a draw against Arsenal and a loss away at Newcastle, albeit a game they dominated, but they lost a late goal. Uh, so the form really after uh, Christmas hasn't been great. Uh, I suppose a point's better than nothing is what you'd say at Bournemouth, but when you're winning 1-0 as they were, to come out after half time and you not expect a reaction and not deal with it is disappointing from Lampard's point of view. Credit to him for digging it out. Alonso in this wing-back role, although it, it did change, the shape changed, but as predominantly starting the game as a wing-back, is in the goals. He was in the goals the other uh, uh, a week ago. Back in with two again as a wing-back uh, to bail them out. Now, they did put Bournemouth under pressure at the end, but there's a chasing pack, and that's the problem, and I think they're feeling the pressure a little bit. You know, they're getting a bit of heat from Man United. They might get some from Tottenham. Sheffield United are hanging around. Wolves are hanging around. And Arsenal, now that they're out of the Europa League, it, it's doubtful, but they may put a run together. And so Chelsea have gone from a position where they've, looking, they've looked relatively comfortable to one where uh, the consistency is the inconsistency. There's not quite the energy or impetus running through the side that we saw earlier in the campaign. Is that just simply a case of players finding sort of an equilibrium as to the momentum of others finding them out, you know, working them out the way that they play? Are they missing Conte big time? Is, is there, is there a, a, a lack of a focal point up front at the moment? What's the issue? Yeah, well, I mean, Abraham's had his injury problems. Batshuayi played for a bit. Giroud was back in. Uh, I, I prefer... I mean, Abraham's the guy that's going to start. Lampard's made that clear. And he's done all right for them. I, I don't mind Giroud up there because I think you can work off him. Uh, you, and by that, I mean you can use his physicality, a bit like France do. France get Mbappé and Griezmann working around him. Uh, and his goal return, Giroud for France, is actually excellent. You know, it's almost one in two games. It's pretty good for anybody. Uh, World Cup winner. Uh, the, he, he has missed Kante and he has changed the shape of the team. And he's changed the personnel within that shape. And I'm thinking in the back three, mm. you know, Rudiger on the bench today, young Tomori comes back in, Christensen's been playing. Uh, so the personnel have changed and the other worrying thing again is, is he seems to continue his, uh, I would say infight is the wrong word, but his beef with Kepa, with Willy Caballero starting again today, uh, all it's going to do is, that as, as the results become in so inconsistent, it's going to pile more pressure onto why. We know you don't fancy him, but he's a better goalkeeper and the chasing pack are coming and we need Champions League football next year. So, you know, are we, are we on a grudge thing here with Kepa or do you really think Willie Caballero is the better option? I don't really think many would put that up as an argument. That could be a problem for them if the, if the defence isn't really feeling it behind them as well, which we've sort of seen a little bit of stuttering in the back. Yeah, I mean, I'm not suggesting Kepa's been in the greatest form, which he hasn't, but he's, just, he's you know, Willie Caballero's a backup now or, or, a, or a cup goalkeeper for them. But clearly there's some discord here between the record signing goalkeeper and the manager. Uh, but ultimately, the bigger picture is Champions League football for this club next season. The transfer ban has ended, and having Champions League football is one of the ways of enticing better players. Uh, and so, not only the finances, but from a personnel issue, it is vital they get this knocked off. And as I say, with United picking up with the Fernandez signing, with Wolves hanging around on a good side in particular, and one or two others, there is no guarantee at the moment, this moment in time that Chelsea are going to make that top four. Okay. Or five, depending on what happens to Man City. And for Bournemouth, do you back them to get out of this? I think they'll get, you know, about two months ago, I was really worried for them. But I've just seen enough recently to think, do you know, I think they'll just get enough points uh, to scrape out, but I, I mean by the skin of their teeth. Right now, that point temporarily took them out of the bottom three before Watford's sensational win over Liverpool put Bournemouth back in the relegation zone. It is so tight, too tight to call. It's getting that way in the top four race as well. Chelsea under pressure to deliver some real results. And of course, they've got to deal with that second leg against Bayern Munich as well.
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.